Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've had a good think about what I want to do next, and um, I am going to build a SSB slash CW rig. Um, I'm going to make it um, 80 meters and 40 meters. Um, I'll keep 80 because there's a couple of nets uh, that I can get onto, but I must admit I'm spending most of my time these days on 40 meters, so that's probably where I'm going to be concentrating a lot of the effort. But what I want to do is I want to have another look at this radio, which is something I built um, some time ago. Um, I'm, I'm going to essentially tear this apart and use components off that for this for this next build. And in doing so, I just want to revisit the circuits, um, look at how I did them. I want to change a couple of things from a biasing point of view, um, do the LT spice simulations, and then build it up. But uh, yeah, this rig worked really well. But like I say, I want to um, have a bit of a tinker around and, and play. Uh, with something else. It's, uh, it'll be a single conversion uh, transceiver uh, like this one and I'll, I'll talk about the topology in a sec. Uh, the difference being I'm not going to include a power amplifier uh, to turn into a QRP rig. I'm going to use uh, leave it as a, a low power rig so just have the, um, the, the driver down here or maybe even something even smaller to then excite the power amplifier that I showed in that last video. Um, I'd like to use that some more, so I'm thinking about driving it up to around sort of that sort of 50 watts, so um, sort of not um, max at 100, but sort of um, half power. So that's my thinking. So there'd be no power up for it at this stage. Um, I'll build it on a big board again because that's what I like. I, I like to see the circuits. It's it's what I enjoy, and I may potentially um, add on a power amplifier down track. But for now, it's just going to be there to excite the. Uh, the, the parent fire. The topology is going to be subtly different, it won't be the same as this one. Uh, it's single conversion, um, this looks it's not very well drawn but I'll, I'll try and go through it. So it'll be, like I say, SSB and CW. Um, if we start in the center here, there'll be two crystal filters. Um, I'll homebrew those using the low profile uh, crystals. Uh, in the past I've used these large ones which have worked well. Um, the IF will be 9 megahertz. Um, like I say I've used these 9 megahertz large size crystals uh, in the past and they've worked well. Uh, this time I've decided to try the uh, the small low profile ones. Um, th th there's a lot of debate out there of how suitable they are but they have been used in other rigs to, to good effect. For example the Bidex series. Um, so I'm going to give them a go. And quite frankly, I bought a hundred off AliExpress for the princely sum of six dollars forty-five New Zealand dollars. So you can't go wrong with that. So um, it'll be at least a good, good play around. So I'm not, I'm not going to use a commercial um, filter. Like I say, I'm going to use a homebrew SSB and CW. I'll make the SSB something like two point eight kilohertz around there somewhere. I enjoy um, wider bandwidths. And the CW, probably something about 700 odd. Um, I've been playing around with some SDR radios and that sort of seems for me to be um, a nice sort of bandwidth. Um, but we'll see how we play, uh, how we go. Um, I'm going to have uh, the first IF amp and the crystal filter and the second IF amp, amp as a, um, a switched uh, block between the uh, transmit and receive. Um, the difference being for well the difference the way I'm going to switch it more the point um, is using an arrangement which I've used before on the little tramping rigs where I have um, a relay on the input and a relay on the output um, but the, the way it works this relay here not only is it switching how the RF gets fed into the IF strip but it also um, has on the the two mixers, which will be SBL ones, uh, a VFO on receive, but on transmit the BFO and the VFOs toggle over. Um, I won't explain how that's done now, but it's easy to do in the software and it works extremely well and the advantage is uh, I can have all of the inputs to the IF strip well and truly away from the outputs um, because the danger is if I have the outputs too close to the inputs then I get feedback uh, and I've had that problem in the past and this arrangement here just that problem just disappeared and it's worked really really well for the very compact little rigs that I've been building um, so I'm going to emulate that here uh, on the larger scale 
Uh, the difference being on transmit for the uh, CW, rather than uh, unbalancing typically this mixer here to reduce a carrier which then eventually gets amplified, I'm going to leave the receiver running on receive and then down here I'm going to use the third output of the uh, SI5351. So typically I use 0 and 1 for the BFO and the VFO. This one here, this third output, will be the um, carrier frequency that will be the CW signal. Um, I'll explain it down track, but uh, it's going to be injected down here and then eventually goes through the bandpass filter, gets amplified, and out it goes. Um, and that output of that oscillator gets switched on and off at the CW rate. So it's exactly what um, I used for this rig here. So this rig here has receiver running all time. Uh, the transmitter is off at the moment, but you'll note then when I key, the output of that third output is outputting an RF signal, which is then going to drive the Class E amplifier, uh, which is not being energized at the moment because that switch is off. But there's enough, there's enough leakage from that uh, carrier frequency to get through the receiver uh, and out the speaker. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice, simple way of producing um, side tone without having to have a dedicated side tone, uh, side tone circuit. So I'm going to do that again uh, for the, the base rig. Because um, like I say, it worked extremely well for the, the smaller rig. I'm still debating if I have a need to uh, filter the output of the SI5351, which is a square wave, to turn it into a sine wave before it gets uh, eventually amplified and out it goes. Um, and why I'm debating about that need is because the output of that will be going through a shared bandpass filter for both 80 and 40 meters before it gets amplified. So potentially, and I'll, I'll have to look at the scope and have a good look at it, this, you know, this bandpass filter here may be sufficient to clean up this output before it's amplified and eventually drives the, the off-board power amplifier. Um, if that's not good enough, uh, then I'll revert back to using um, a low-pass filter here, which is exactly what I did down here for this particular rig, where I was experimenting with um, converting the square waves into sine waves be before being fed into the two uh, mixes. So that would be something to have a bit of a play around with. Uh, I mentioned just then that this bandpass filter is going to be shared between the transmit and the receive circuitry. So on receive, uh, which is the position of all the relays here, It'll come through um, through the bandpass filter and then into and out through the, the IF strip. And on transmit, it's the other way around. It comes back through, gets amplified, and out it goes. What I want to try and do to shear this filter uh, between the transmit and receive is to use a large four-pole double-throw relay. So I'm actually going to use the what's traditionally going to be the antenna relay. Um, these, uh, are, as you can see, are quite large and the, the, the poles themselves have separated quite well. And the reason why I want to uh, try and use this to see if it's going to work is I want to separate as much as I possibly can the output of that RF amplifier, which is going to be here. I want to separate it as much as I can from the input. Um, so again, similar to what I've had over here, I, I, I minimise the risk of feedback uh, before it goes out. So I'll be using the uh, the... The, the, the dead opposite length or size, I should point, of the, uh, the relays. So, as you're looking at here, the very left one and the very right one, which is sort of that orientation there. So, that's what I'm going to play around with and see if that works. Uh, and if it does, great. If it doesn't, eh, we'll, we'll try something else. Um, yeah. I'll be doing the same thing up here. I've sort of depicted up here just as I was thinking about it. Uh, I, I need to switch this um, SSB in CW filter in and out of circuit depending on the mode uh, and again I'm going to use uh, one of those large relays again to to minimize um, not so much feedback this time but the selectivity by having the output too close to the input so we'll see how that works out but other than that it's a uh, it's just a, a very simple um, single conversion um, superhead uh, albeit with a, um, a slightly different way of, of treating the two mixes here depending if it's on transmit and receive. Um, I think I mentioned I want to use 
the uh, a, a, a microphone which I've been sort of holding on to for quite some time here. It's a big old sort of bench microphone. Uh, I've been looking forward to using that one, so I'll be looking to use that. And what else? What else? Uh, from a, a display point of view, just debating if I'm going to use a LCD like this one here or um, um, an LCD versus an OLED display. Uh, or an LCD display. Um, I should say I'm um, so many times. Just debating. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I don't need a fancy display. Um, I'm quite happy with just frequency. That's good enough for me. But uh, I may just from a software point of view give that a play with. We'll see. Other than that, uh, again just use uh, the cheap and cheerful little Arduino uh, micros or minis. Uh, this mini, uh, nano, sorry, in this particular case uh, to, to be the brains. Um, yeah, with a rotary encoder. This one's really nice smooth on which I was very kindly given. So I want to use one of those. And that is probably about it. The only other bits and pieces which I've sort of received in from, from AliExpress is uh, some more strip board here, some more copper board. Uh, very, very inexpensive. Uh, this particular one is um, single sided and this one here is double sided which works quite well for, um, for shields and that. Again, very, very inexpensive and uh, now that China's borders are opening up it's it's uh, the delivery times, in fact it's probably more so, yeah, more international flights that the, the, the delivery times are now coming right down and it's only taking a couple of weeks now for items to turn up. So, I think I've covered everything I want to talk about. I've talked about the uh, the crystals I want to use. Um, I'm going to, like I mentioned before, um, reuse a lot of the components of uh, this radio here. And I think that's probably about it. So I will say 73 here. I hope everybody's uh, doing well. And I will uh, break it up into a series. Um, as I've said many, many times before, um, they're not tutorials. I am not an expert. I'm not a design engineer. It is purely just me playing around and documenting it um, to hopefully give others uh, an idea that it can be quite easily done um, and quite inexpensive and, and give it a go. Um, it doesn't take much at all. So that's the whole thrust and um, I know I say that every time and I'll keep saying it because I certainly do not want to come across as a know-it-all. Anyway, enough said. 73 and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers all.